for the individuals uh, make sure that you are keeping yourselves uh, updated with what's going on keep reskilling yourselves make sure that you are very well aware of all the newer technologies uh, so that they are the key enablers that's the main reason right Hello, everybody, and welcome to a whole new episode of Engati CX. I am a host Rahul, and today you folks are again in for a treat. We've got the CTO of Tech Mahindra and the head of digital transformation with us on the show today. But before we jump into all that awesomeness, uh, let's just you know dive into uh, in the introduction for Engati and what it really is. So Engati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform. available across 14 channels with 30000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case ingati has also been recognized as a top platform by inc.com techworld cio and many others we run the ingati blog the video channel and the ingati cx podcast receiving upwards of 300000 visitors annually and now for the guest you have a treat over here we have nikunj nirmal on board today he is a business executive and an accomplished global leader with extensive experience in building and growing multi million dollar it services business and technology operations he has delivered large global programs and strategic initiatives with strong focus on customer centricity and innovation he is known for his ability to improve organization's effectiveness motivate and build high performance global teams focused on solving business problems and leveraging innovative solutions to drive sustainable growth nikush has proven expertise in business turnaround customer management strategic planning managing complex transitions integration of cross functional teams product management and delivery effective communication employee motivation and leadership development he specializes in business development through large transformation deals by using innovative global business models welcome to the show nikun just such an honor to have you on board thank you i am happy to be here and love to share my thoughts appreciate that so just jumping on to the first question directly nikun is how important is it to integrate digital technology into you know all areas of business and will it change the way companies operate and deliver value to the customers absolutely so uh, i think digital transformation has been a buzzword in the last decade to a great deal and uh, many a times people believe it's a myth or it's just a buzzword but if you think about it uh, even in our day to day lives forget about businesses the amount of uh, digitization that we have done uh, simply speaking you know just moving over to digital cameras mm-hmm. the access to the technology that we have on hand just to do the day to day course it's it's tremendous right uh, whether it's uh, signing documents which you used to do for various different transactions it's all digitized right now right? you don't have to take a print out scan etc etc most of the times so just looking at the impact that it has on day to day lives and now that if you translate that to how businesses look at it right? essentially all businesses are at some point of time addressing a consumer even okay. if it is a b2b business it's basically somebody within that other organization that is being addressed i took a think about it from that perspective how a human would be able to interact with the technology or a business process that way if you think about it yes i mean digitization is the need of the hour it will continue to grow and if you look at the current generation that's growing up right when i look at my kids the way they interact with the conversational systems such as alexa google assistant as well as when i uh, i have been very heavily engaged with the universities and i talk to the kids over there and they don't want to talk to anybody uh, if you they need something they're like i just want to make sure that i am able to do everything by myself they would prefer a chatbot an automated chatbot versus talking to a human uh, i remember a time when i was uh, on a flight and i was going to meet with a customer and uh, it was a university so uh, it was a 6 hour long flight and luckily i had a student right next to me so i said if you don't mind i would like to interview you and take your opinion on how do you want a digital transformation to be from a student perspective right or how a university should cater to you and that was exactly bang on right she said the same thing we don't want to talk to advisors we don't want to talk to anybody as long as possible it has to be all automated and self service so that's the need of the hour uh, even from a sales perspective you think about it uh, uh, for business is also the tracking becomes very easy when the transactions are digitized right you can measure the efficiency you can measure the productivity so the metrics are 
put in a proper perspective. And with that, you will have uh, measured ways to then continuously make improvements. Right? So in every facet of life, whether it's business, personal life, I think digital technologies are making a big impact. And with the current trends that are going on, I think it will continue to grow. There's, there's no way we are scaling back on this. And uh, it would require modernization to some extent for certain legacy technologies. But technology is still just an enabler. Uh, at the end of the day, digitization is all about experience. Uh, in any business process, in any personal process, it's, it's at the end of the day, just about the human-centric innovation that we are doing. That's how I would define the digitization tool. Absolutely. And it's amazing how you mentioned, uh, you know, it's just an enabler because at the end, it's going to drive experience. So leading on to my next question is, how is digital transformation driving customer experience at the moment? So I think it's about uh, the agility at the speed at which uh, I would define it in two ways. Right, When we talk about digital transformation in terms of how the organization is dealing with it and how the customer experience is getting transformed because of that. So when I look at the enterprises that we are dealing with, they are mostly looking at trying to come up with ways where there is more and more self-service in all different channels. Even if there is somebody is going into a retail store, we are trying to see that how can we drive more digitization in the retail stores as well to improve that experience. So from an enterprise standpoint, they are building the capabilities. But from a customer standpoint, if you look at it, it's about being able to get a transaction done quickly without having to wait and 24 hours a day. If I want to do something, I would rather have it done quickly by myself. A simple uh, thing, again, an employee experience cannot be uh, differentiated from a customer experience, right? Many a times we miss out on the employee experience piece, but if your employees are digitally empowered, they will automatically improve the customer experience. So if we take a couple of scenarios, say for example, the most common aspect when people think about CX is when, a consumer would reach out to your call center right, and how that experiences. And traditionally, that is what has been measured to derive the NPS and other things. But now, if you look at, even if you know you don't have a chatbot that is enabled, or you don't have an automated IVR that would answer the questions for the customer, but even if the call comes through, if you have your agent enabled in such a way that they are able to have the next best steps, they know the context where the customer is calling, they know... Uh, what are the possible reasons? What are the possible resolutions? If you're able to transcribe all of that and run through an automated system, through an AI, come back with the next best actions, boom. I don't have to ask 10 questions to the customer. I am just able to, in the first go, say that this is what is going on and this is the resolution to your problem. Anything else I can help you with. Now, that is a beautiful experience, right? And I have personally been through some of those experiences where I would give a call and hey, we saw that you had this last transaction. Are you calling about this? Is there a problem? Boom, boom, boom. And it's done. So that's the CX. Now, did the customer have an automated experience? No. But did the digital technologies play a big role? Absolutely. Right? So that's how I think we need to differentiate the different channels and different interactions and then define the customer experience from those different channels even coming to conversational systems, which are supposed to be fully automated. Again, trying to figure out in minimum number of steps and identifying the context more quickly to be able to get to the answers that the customer is looking for. That's more of a consumer standpoint. Now, uh, looking at simple banking transactions, uh, if I have to apply for a loan, I need maybe uh, hundreds of documents to be submitted. I get time in the night to do that. If, if I were to go to a bank and then try to do these transactions, it would take a long, long time. Right? And that was traditionally the case. You, I, I remember having gone to a bank, uh, print out, getting a printout of the statement, then getting it stamped, so that it is accepted. Now, and that is where the acceptance has also improved, right? If there is a uh, digitally downloaded copy, it is accepted now, versus you needed to get a stamp and everything in the past. So think of those, and then having access to that information around the clock, and the expectation is that you would have that. Uh, if I go on a site and it is uh, undergoing a maintenance, it is disappointing. But the expectation is now that it should be available 24-7. Right? That's, that's how it is. So I think the availability to be able to do anything and everything at any given point of time right away and with the shortest or the mid shortest in the shortest time with minimum effort, I think is, is the best way. And then 
customer delight comes in when something happens which you are not expected. You, you didn't expect that to happen. When, when I give a call and said, I think you are calling for an outage. We know that there is an outage in this area. You will get a notification once it is resolved. Would you like to get a notification? Yes, done. I don't have to wait in a queue for something. Right? So those are very simple uh, transactions, which if digitized, it improves the experience of your brand altogether. Because at the end of the day, uh, it's the customer experience defines your brand experience and how they would talk about your brand with other people and how they would promote your brand. Right? And that would eventually drive back to all your business metrics, translation of more growth, everything. Because that's at the core of it. And the minimum expectation that the customers have now has improved drastically, especially with the new age companies. Like if you look at interactions with Netflix, if you look at interactions with uh, Amazon, it's it's pretty straightforward, right? You don't have to worry much about it. You have a concern, it's automatically addressed most of the times. So those are the kind of expectations, but uh, there's a huge divide. You have one spectrum versus a completely different spectrum as well, where you don't even have a digital payments enabled. Like last week, I was trying to make a payment to a doctor, and like you don't have a way for me to go and pay or on the phone also. So I have to, I have been trying to call you for three to four days now just to make a payment, right? That's not an experience that I would like rather. I would just be able to go and even if it's through IVR, just an automatic payment. So these are the experiences which matter a lot in day-to-day -day life. And that's how uh, you define how the technologies are making an impact in day-to-day -day life today. Absolutely. Uh, you know, especially with things that make it really uh, easy, uh, very fast and just on the spot, it just, life just becomes mobile. And I think that's what it's all leading to, especially Absolutely. Pandemic, yeah. pandemic also. But uh, talking more about uh, digital transformation, especially in the recent times, uh, Nikunj, what, according to you, are the key trends that we are seeing in digital transformation, in, in, especially in 2020? So. I would say there are probably 10 to 15 key trends, but I'll uh, uh, stick to very few to start with, which I believe personally are going to have the biggest impact. Uh, 5G at the core of it, everything. Uh, with 5G getting more and more adoption, right? and uh, at least uh, in the Western world, uh, that has already been rolled out. Uh, there are not very many devices out there yet which take advantage of this, but once that is underway within a year or so, I think... Uh, 5G will make a big difference to the consumers in terms of how the content is being delivered, the expectation of the content that comes through, and it opens up a whole new world of uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, your sporting events, all of that happening on the devices, mobile devices, right? which currently is bandwidth constrained unless we are onto a very fast network within the house or something. So that restricts the mobility to some extent. So it will open up altogether a new line of business or a growth for certain businesses. Uh, even from an enterprise standpoint, if you look at it, uh, the enterprises would have their own uh, small 5G networks, right, which would enable very low latency and would drive a great deal of innovation with the connected devices. And that coupled with uh, the data that gets collected through all this, that coupled with analytics uh, and AI on top of the analytics or the data that comes in, I think that is going to transform the whole ecosystem with the amount of applications that enterprises can have. It's going to be a huge growth that we look at. Now, if you again, I like to relate things at a personal level or how it affects day-to-day -day life. Then the connected vehicles or the autonomous vehicles, right? In a way, uh, connected vehicles to start with, but autonomous vehicles are uh, not very far off right now. And there is a huge deal of automation that has already happened over there. But when uh, I look at uh, how Tesla has transformed the things, for example, I was at the CES earlier and uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is the largest uh, electronic show that happens, it felt like an auto show. There was almost all large brands showcasing their next generation of connected vehicles, right? And all of them trying to bring autonomous uh, driving capabilities into it. But at the core of it was... Uh, large screen which transforms the experience for the customers and then it's nothing but a next set of revolution something that we saw with the smartphones where you had an ecosystem built in and now you have a developer ecosystem that will eventually get opened up it's not very open right now 
But once it gets opened up, you're looking at a flurry of new applications that would come in. My kids already love uh, what Tesla can do for them, uh, even though they just play the games over there. But then it is a movie theater experience and then OTT kind of things where, you know, I get a feature or two every uh, month and the car keeps getting better and better for me. So that's that's an amazing experience, right? Not just about the drive quality, but it's about the overall enjoyment of the vehicle itself. I think that's a big new frontier. And once the autonomous vehicles come in completely, we are looking at the time getting freed up. Uh, the commute, right? One hour commute that happens in a car is suddenly freed up. What that translates to? It translates to more mobile applications in the car life, but it opens up a whole new set of applications because now you have this set of customers who suddenly have an hour to themselves, which they were just driving around. It could mean more consumption of entertainment. It could mean uh, more trainings. It could it could mean that uh, people are able to watch sports. They are able to get into a VR, anything and everything. Right? And all of that leads to the next thing, which is privacy. So one of the biggest trends with all this digital transformation going around is, uh, and we are seeing a lot of activism, especially in the US over here, where uh, there are a lot of privacy uh, laws getting passed, right? Each state is trying to do something around it. So when we look at that, it means that uh, there is a whole new area that is opening up where uh, people are going to get more and more concerned because at the end of the day, a service is not free, right? You are basically the payment or your data is the payment. But that opens up a flurry. And we have seen the recent uh, uh, transactions that happened, uh, which kind of got exposed on the internet. Secondly, I think the grueling that uh, likes of Google, uh, I think, uh, yeah, Google and Facebook went through recently, right, in the cabinet. So with, when you look at all of these things, right, privacy is going to be a next big focus area and consumers being able to understand what data is being stored and their right to say what can be done with that data. I think those are the primary changes that would come in uh, in terms of how the companies operate. And I think from a technology standpoint, the biggest trend is uh, moving from on-prem to cloud. And it's not just uh, moving your applications to cloud, but I increasingly see that people are moving more and more towards as a service model. Everything, everybody wants to move towards a service-based model, whether it's an infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, the software as a service. But everybody is trying to go towards a subscription-based model. Even uh, the applications such as your uh, Adobe Photoshop and all, everything is moving towards or already has moved up significantly towards as a service model. So that's more of how the digital economy is changing uh, for enterprises as well as for the individuals. And I think that generates a sustained revenue stream as well. So that's one more thing, but it also reduces the capital cost. What it means is the enterprises have an ability to do this transformation at a scale and much faster with lower initial investment that is needed to get to that stage. And that's where I think more and more a product-based adoption is happening versus a traditional approach of having more and more customized development of applications which are on prem right? So that's a big transformation from a technology standpoint that uh, we'll continue to see in the next uh, three to five years, for the next three to five years, actually. Right, right. And it's so fascinating because all of this is happening really fast. In, and, you yeah. know, it's just rampantly uh, increasing the abilities and, and the way we are adopting to this. So this brings to my next question, Nikhil, is, you know, how can companies adopt to a multi-speed technology delivery approach to kind of accelerate innovation and catch up with the digital natives? Very interesting question. Uh, I have been through this journey almost started 10 years back uh, when it went through a simple agile implementation, right? And it was, look, let's just go agile. But it's not that simple. When you go agile, it's not straightforward because when you're looking at an enterprise, for a newer company, right, a startup or a company that doesn't have a lot of legacy or a technical tech, it's fine. But when you're talking about hundreds of downstream applications, it's very difficult. And that's where this concept of multi-speed comes in very effectively. You have to create a hybrid model. Unless we have that hybrid model in place, it's going to continue to have problems in terms of uh, the dependencies and you, Essentially, you are just trying to do one part of it in an iterative manner, I would say. Or you are just putting a 
evaluation mechanism every two weeks through sprints. But other than that, your actual delivery is dependent on uh, further uh, downstream systems, which are may or may not be able to keep up. So I think the key to this is strategic planning. How, what are you planning to do? And what are the key capabilities that you need? So I think an organization has to go through a transformation in terms of, it's not easy, but more of think about it as a set of digital services. Instead of applications, if you think about all, all, all an organization needs is a set of services that cater to, maybe it's one of it is to say simplifying it, it's a payment service, a shopping cart service, this service, that service, right? And then eventually when you have to build an application for front end, it's more about, I need five of these services for this particular application. So you just consume those services. So that is the level of transformation that has to come in. And that's where we probably won't need this multi-speed thing. But till then, I think it's the clear planning of how you have the iterations or a second part set of uh, safe, agile, or agile uh, downstream systems and aligning those capabilities beforehand so that your front-end systems are able to then transform more quickly, right? So it's planning out those capabilities to be in place first or have them synced up with the front-end changes, I think is the key. And the and again, the prioritization keeps changing. So it's very, very difficult to implement something like that. But uh, the way we have encountered that problem and tried to solve it, I would say, is through having a smaller pods rolled out into the second team. So it becomes kind of, you know, scrum of scrum kind of system where then you have the platform pods or the downstream pods which are running two or three sprints ahead of you delivered. So even if they have a delivery which is uh, one, one and a half months, you know, at a frequency of one month or so, you are still in sync with this. And I think the other part which would help there was another bigger problem that we encountered was availability of the environments because there are so many environments you can have it. Now, if you have these multiple agile pods coming in and then you're trying to deliver it, what it really means is that you probably need, now we need five or 10 or 15 different environments. That itself adds cost, complexity, and uh, it requires a high level of configuration for each of the releases in a way. But... Now, I think over the last uh, few years, we have seen the containerization, cloud migration, all of that taking up a, a good traction. With that, now it's very easy to have an on-demand environment created. Right? So you, you don't have to have a sustained cost. Plus, because of the high level of automation and containerization, you don't necessarily need to add more people to maintain one more environment. I think when you look at this in a holistic way, the way the transformation is happening, I think it's become a bit easier versus 10 years back when we encountered these problems to start with. So I think it's very much possible now at this time, especially if you take advantage of uh, the uh, cloud migration, if you take advantage of the containerization that's happening, and then do a bit of uh, smart strategic planning in terms of prioritizing your uh, business goals upfront, and then uh, working out the things. So people say the role of project manager is probably going away. I think that's even more strategic now than ever before. Even though, yes, the Scrum Masters would continue to play a very crucial role when you look at a larger roadmap or at least the larger projects, when you're looking at multi-million dollar projects, I think you would need those people to be there. Maybe the title would change, but the kind of work that has to be done still remains the same. I think if you do all of that uh, very integrated in a very integrated fashion, I think it is being done. And I think the safe, agile kind of tries to address it uh, through uh, the scrum planning, meeting the PI planning that happens. I think there are ways that processes are also evolving because of which it is very much possible at this time. But again, uh, implementation is a altogether different story and each organization has its own unique challenges. Definitely. I mean, uh, that is one place where every organization can get stuck. So. Yeah, I think yeah. a little more strategic uh, approach towards things should be like, you know, uh, the key to that. Uh, well, uh, amazing conversation, Nikunji, and so many fresh ideas. Is there any other thought you would like to leave our uh, audience with today? I think the uh, only thing I would say is uh, for the individuals, uh, make sure that you are keeping yourselves uh, updated with what's going on. Keep 
reskilling yourselves, make sure that you are very well aware of all the newer technologies uh, so that they are the key enablers. That's the main reason, right? Um, I would say business leaders need to focus on the transformation and the experience part of it and think of it, how you're delivering the brand experience. And for the enterprises, just look out for not your competition, but trying to do the best that you can do uh, to stay ahead of everybody else in the game, right? And see, uh, always think from a customer standpoint. A uh, lot of organizations tend to think of it from a department standpoint. So this is my department. These are the five departments. What will they need to do? And you basically start from there and you go up. But instead of that, it should be, this is the experience that the work all has to be done to achieve that. And just keep that one goal in mind. As long as I think we all do that, and you will be able to bring in a great deal of digitization and transformation, and we'll be able to bring in the customer delight, not just excellence in customer experience. Absolutely, there you have it, guys. Nikunj, uh, Nikunj Nirmal, ladies and gentlemen, dropping jewels on Angati CX for us. So thank you so much, uh, Nikunj, for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable, and I know our audience is really going to enjoy this interview. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I had a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I would be happy to. Have any questions from the audiences as well in the future? If there are any, I can answer. I'll be happy to do so. Appreciate that. So, where can the audience reach you, Nikunj? Uh, it's easy to look me up on LinkedIn. I think that's the best way. Mm -hmm. Just uh, look me up, uh, send me a message. I'll be happy to respond and connect. Awesome. So, there you have it, guys. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. So many fresh ideas, a lot of insights that you can get from him. And we'll be back with a new episode with a brand new expert soon. So stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day.